Okay. So, um, just one thing about the, you know, about the career fair. If you have an opportunity, they'll be there from two to three. You can stop down and chat with them. Um, there are a number of companies looking for Cam Bio, um, computer science. So, um, you could certainly go down and and talk to them, get information. If you have a resume, I'm sure they'll take it. But if not, they have places to submit your resume online. But I know like Lubrizol is looking at eight, <laughs> like eight positions um, at least. And some of those are for bio working in the toxicology lab. I know one student that was in organic last year took some information and got in contact with their recruiters and is doing internships in like three different divisions there uh, over the summer and also this fall. So, And even if you're pre-med or oriented towards pre-health, the more experiences you can get, the better off you will be. So I would say, you know, just if, not, if you've got time, chat, chat with them. Not every experience has to be oriented towards medicine or health. I mean, every experience is going to make you a more, a broader person in terms of having experiences. So there's a pharmaceutical company down there, Oakwood Labs, um, that hires both chem and bio. And they've, I think one of our alumni is down there. So if you have an opportunity, don't, you know, take advantage of it. This is the first one that they have. And they're a little worried people won't show up, so. But they're, um, and you can get, you can get Lubrizol sunglasses, which are going to my administrative assistant because she wanted, she took the blue ones, but she also wanted a pair of green ones, so. Okay, so in order to get you to your internship, we need to talk about stereochemistry. <laughs> So what I want to start with is I want to start with basic definitions. And on Friday, what we're going to do is we're going to do problems where I'm going to give you two molecules and I'm going to say, what's their stereochemical relationship? And we'll do those in class. You can do them in groups individually. Um, and then I'll walk around and you can tell me what the answers are and I can tell you whether you're right or wrong. So the first thing is we want operational definitions. So, for instance, if I said, in terms of in terms of the chiral center's configurations, what can you tell me about a pair of enantiomers? What would be the relationship of two enantiomers' chiral centers in terms of their configurations? What would they be? Would the two center configurations be the same? Or switch? They're either the same or switch. Yeah, switch. Opposite? Yeah. How's that sound? Um, could, um, another way of saying that would be one's R and one is S. Okay. So, in terms of the chiral centers, then, the, a pair of enantiomers ha has each chiral center or each chiral carbon or what the book calls a stereogenic center chiral carbon sounds better each chiral center is opposite so when you're going from one molecule to the other one enantiomer to the other each chiral center is going to be opposite so that takes into account one chiral center or multiple chiral centers so everyone has to be exactly the opposite when you have enantiomers. Now I know enantiomers are mere image isomers that are non-superposable, but we need to get to a working definition that involves the chiral centers. And so that's how we would define an enantiomer. So if I said you have a 3R, 4S, molecule where the chiral center at 3 is R and 4 is S, what would be its enantiomer? Three, 
3S4R. 3S4R. So those two would be enantiomers. Okay. So that's so every chiral center has to be opposite. What we're going to do is we're going to get pairs of molecules and we're going to evaluate what kind of relationship they have based on the chiral centers between those two molecules. So then how about diastereomers? If I said I have a 3R, 4S molecule, what would a diastereomer of that molecule have as its configuration? Three R four R. Any others? Three S four S. Any others? There aren't any others. So what does that mean practically then? A pair of diastereomers has what in terms of its configuration? I'll start you out. At least at least one chiral center same. Same configuration. And at least one different configuration? One opposite. So at least one the same, one opposite. So in those pairs of molecules, the 3R4S and the 3R4R, one's the same, the 3, and one's opposite the 4. For 3S4S, for three the 4 is the same, the 3 is opposite. Okay, and so the critical difference between enantiomers and diastereomers is diastereomers have to have more than one chiral center. Now, enantiomers can have more than one chiral center as well, but we could have an enantiomer with a single chiral center, R and S. But we can't have diastereomers until we have two chiral centers. All right, so that makes sense to everybody in terms of, of how I'm defining these now, specifically with the chiral centers? So then we have a meso compound. So what is a, what's a meso compound? Well, meso has at least two chiral carbons and it has a mirror plane of symmetry. So the critical part here is you can't have a meso compound unless you have two chiral centers, just like diastereomers. And here, for instance, here's an example of a meso compound. We've got two chiral centers attached to the chlorines. And what does it mean to be a chiral center? I forget. I really don't forget, but... What do you have to be? Four different, groups attached. Four different groups attached, and also you cannot pass a mirror plane through that carbon. So if you can pass a mirror, through, mirror plane through the carbon, not chiral. So here the mirror plane would go like this through the molecule to cut it in half. Notice it didn't go through any carbons, and so they're still chiral, 
So this would be an example of a meso compound. And a meso compound may have the mirror plane kind of hidden, and I'll show you examples of that um, in, a, in a number of minutes. So a meso compound is basically just a more specific version of a diastereomer? Yes, um, except diastereomers are still. Well, diastereomers are different molecules altogether. A meso compound, the, the critical part about a meso compound is that a meso compound is not chiral. So we have chirality at two different levels here. We have chirality at the carbon level, and we have chirality at the molecular level. And at the carbon level, it's got four different groups attached to it, no mirror plane. At the molecular level, what it means to be not chiral is that you are superimposable on your mirror image. Right? The gloves in the lab were an example of that. If I take the gloves in the lab and I lay them out as mirror images, they're superimposable. If I lay my hands out as mirror images, they're not superimposable. So a meso compound isn't chiral, and it will not rotate plane polarized light. So if I gave you a pair of molecules, then we're going to talk about different relationships that molecule could have. But these are the operational definitions that we're going to use. And to be honest, the meso compound, you've got to make the molecule so that you can see a mirror plane. If there's no mirror plane, it's not meso. The diastereomers and the antimers are going to be based on what's the relationship between the chiral centers in those two molecules. All opposite or one opposite, one same. Okay. Right? Everybody, Bobby? So, for it to be chiral, means that the mirror plane can't pass through it, it's not superimposable. Right. So, if you no mirror plane can pass through the molecule, and that it's not superimposable on its mirror image. If you can pass a mirror plane through any object, it's superimposable on its mirror image. What do I have? I have my cup. This car. Actually, even with the writing, I could pass a mirror plane through it directly through the script Indians, and there's a C on both sides, so I could cut it right in half. It's not chiral. If I had another one over here, as its mirror image, it would be superimposable. What do you mean by same plane? So those, both, both those are coming at you, they were on different planes. So if it was trans? Yeah. If it was trans, it would not be meso. So yeah, if it was, if the way to have a, the meso, have it not be meso would be to have it trans. Now there's no mirror plane that cuts the molecule in half. So cis is meso, trans is not. And you may even see in the book, I can imagine them asking problems because I have in the past, where they might, this is a 1,2-dichlorocyclohexane with the one having RS chirality and two having RNS chirality. They could give you the name of this with it being like 1R, 2R, and ask us if it's meso. And so then you'd have to draw the structure out and see whether or not it was cis or trans. So you may see those kinds of problems in the in the book. All right, so let's think about some problems here. And what I want to do is kind of show you different ways to approach it, different ways to answer it, and then you can get some practice on Friday and beyond. So let's start with something simple. Maybe.
So here's two tetrahedra. First, they have, they have to have the same groups attached to them. If I didn't do that, then there's no stereochemical relationship. So the question is, what is the stereochemical relationship between these molecules? Are they A, the same, but they're not meso? They are the same meso compound. C, they're enantiomers. And D, they're diastereomers. So those are the four possibilities. Or E would be none of these. And none of these kind of gets to a trick question, what you guys would call a trick question. But we won't go to there right at the moment. Okay. So tell me, tell me how I should approach this problem. Well, it can't be uh, anything that requires two chiral centers because there's only one chiral center. Okay, stop right there. So if it's only one chiral center, we can eliminate the answers that require two chiral centers. And those are? So it can't, this one cannot be B or D. Because B would require multiple chiral centers, as would D. So we're really down to it's the same, and it's not meso, or they're enantiomers. So those are the two possibilities for this molecule. Okay, that's important. It's important to eliminate when to eliminate answers when we can. All right? What else how should I how should I think about this? Um, I like looked at it and see if they saw if they were superimposed or not. Okay. Can you superimpose those in your head? Like if you twist like I was just like thinking about like twisting it a certain way. And then I think they are not superimposable. So you don't think they're superimposable, which means they're what? An antiomers. An and you did that in your head or on paper? You're either right or wrong. Yeah. We'll find out. <laughs> but isn't it not, I mean, technically it, it's A only because it doesn't have two chiral centers, so it can't be me though. So, like, couldn't A just, like, not be one because it can't? Well, I'm saying it's the same molecule and it's not meso. But These two would be the same and they are definitely not meso. But would you just, like, do you even need to include that part? I, you know, I do because I'm gonna, we're going to go to multiple chiral centers here where the molecule could be the same, but they're the same meso compound or they're the same and they're not meso. So that's a catch-all answer for everything, is why I'm phrasing it that way. So if you just want to think of it same for this molecule, that's fine. But for other ones, that it's possible they could be the same in either meso or same and not meso. Okay. So anybody have any other ways they'd approach the problem? if they can't rotate it in their mind. Now, if you can do that, that's great. Oh, uh, the, the group switching thing? So okay. I switched the, um, for the first one on the left, I switched the H and the CL. And since that one switch, or then I saw that um, that is the counterclockwise, so it's the S, but then it's only one switch, so it's the R. Right? Yeah, maybe. And then, the yeah. One, it's counterclockwise and that's S. So then they're in antiomers because they're opposite. Okay, so you got two things going on here. Um. <laughs> You're group switching to determine the to determine the configuration of both <laughs> molecules. And so if they both had the same configuration, they would be what? The same. The same. And if they had opposite configurations, they would be in antiomers. Chase? I did the same thing. Okay. 
So, no, so another method would be let's determine R and S for every chiral center and use the rules that I had on the previous slide in order to determine if they're enantiomers or diastereomers. Any other methods that Determining whether they're superimposable would be would be fine, and we just have to rotate the molecule to see if we can get it that way. Because at best, you know, if we can only line up two groups, they're enantiomers. If we can line up all four, then they're the same. So you could do that on paper as well, and you could do that on paper by using her group switching method, in addition to rotating it. So. If all else fails, you can determine R and S. For almost every problem, it fails spectacularly in one, in one kind of problem, and this isn't it. But we'll get to that. So certainly you could determine R and S. But let's say you don't have time for that, and you want to kind of go quicker. You could certainly try and orient the molecule so that they are the same. If you tried to orient the molecule so that they're mirror images of each other, you would have to make it look like this because the base tetrahedron has to be a mirror image of that. So you'd have to take this molecule and maybe rotate it a little bit. As far as group switching that goes though, how many switches would it take to make the left molecule into the right molecule? Two? Three? Uh, let's let's do it. So let's switch the H and the CL. So there's one switch, and now what do I need to do? I need to switch the BR and the CH3, which is two switches. Am I lined up yet? No. So I need to do a third switch of the BR and the CL. So it took me three switches to turn the left molecule into the right molecule. So what happened to the configuration then? Are those two configurations the same or opposite? Opposite because it took me an odd number of switches. So if it's an even number of switches, same configuration, odd number of switches, then they have opposite. So what I'm ultimately finding here then is that these have that that has the opposite configuration. And if I was determining configuration, the one on the left is S, and then when I'm all said and done, the one on the right is Well, the one on the right would be R in the original molecule. Okay. So you said they were superimposable, right? I said they were not. Okay. So if you can do that in your head, if you can try and rotate the molecule and line them up and put them together, that's great. You might want to scratch some things out on paper as you're doing it under the extreme pressure of a test. But that's ultimately what we want to do, is compare those. Right. Now, let's make it a little bit harder. For these two, they were put in exactly the same orientation. And I'm going to give you a caveat to the counting the number of switches it takes to go from left to right. You can only do that when the molecules are both in exactly the same configuration or same orientation. If they're not in the same orientation, like this, a Fisher projection and a tetrahedron, then you have to either make them into the same orientation or you have to do R and S. But when they're not in the same orientation you cannot use 
the group switching to go, how many switches did it take to go from left to right? You can't use that technique anymore. So let's say we've got a CLBRH, CH3. And I hope you kind of see, it doesn't really matter what the groups are. All I need is four different groups. I mean, I don't even have to get tricky and start putting C double bond O's in. It's just a group. Okay, so these are not in the same orientation. So what I'd like you to do is your choices are still A and C because there's only one chiral center. I'll give you a minute or two. Go ahead and tell me what Tell me what those, tell me whether they're the same or whether they're opposite after you work it out, A or C. And you can work it out by another method. If you want to convert the tetrahedron to a fissure or the fissure to a tetrahedron, it must be more fun at being had in that class than in here. <laughs> So, if you got to do R and S, are they the same or opposite? So, tell me, tell me where you think that pair is. You can discuss if you want after you, before or after you get your answer.
Okay, you're running out of time. Okay, I think I still got a couple answers. I had one more answer out there. And this is how I this is how I determine participation, by the way. So when I had like six of seven or seven of seven participations, I go through and I just make sure you've answered something for that day. So you're if you're taking a pass, you're taking a pass that's not really good. Okay, we got all the answers, so let's see what we get. This morning we have 14 15 split. Well, an 18 to 9 split this time. So let's go through and see what we've got. Uh, I'm going to close the question because. All right, so what was the configuration of the molecule on the left? R or S? S. S? So let's see, if I'm going to switch groups, I switch the H and the BR. I switch the CL and the CH3. So I've now made two switches going from BR to CL to CH3 is indeed S. Now what about the molecule on the right in the Fisher projection? Remember, a Fisher projection has bold and then dashed wedges. So all I have to do is switch the H to either of the dashed wedges. So I'll just do it this way. And then I'll switch the CH3 and the BR. So going from BR to CL is what? Clockwise, so it's R. Sorry, going out, it says. It's opposite. Right, remember there's three things you gotta do. You gotta get the you gotta get the ordering right, then you gotta get the fourth group in the back, and then you gotta make sure you understand the difference between clockwise and counterclockwise. And you might have to take a break in between each one of those steps to make sure you're okay. All right, so there are two S's, so that makes it A. They are the same. Okay, so these are the same. So these are the same molecules. Now, this, we this morning we kind of talked a little bit about could you? Is it easy to convert a tetrahedron into a Newman projection? And the answer is. Um, not necessarily. It is if you can see this in your head. And it's easy, it's relatively easy to convert a fissure into a tetrahedron if you can kind of see how the molecule can be rotated. But instead of trying to explain that to you with no model, um, what I said I'd do is I will... I will reconnect uh, our virtual reality system that we have um, in the office next door and see if I can orient a molecule in both of those and show you how we can rotate it down. And I'll try and do that in a format that makes sense and then put it on YouTube as a video. Um, if I I'll see what I can do. I either put it in stereo vision, which means you need to have like the cheap, you need to pull up the video on your phone and have like the cheap goggles, which nobody wants to wear. And I have like 30 of them in my office, so you could come by and borrow it to see this. But also, um, I think people were able to see the three dimensions if they just saw the stereo view on the movie. I could probably put it in one of those things where you wear the blue green, the blue red glasses. And you can see it in three dimensions, but I don't know how that'll work. And I also don't 
I only have enough for maybe one class, so I'd have to order some more, which I could do. So I'll try and put that together. There is a video on there on how to go from a from a uh, Fisher projection to a Newman projection using the models. Um, so I'll try and create something similar to this if you wanted to see, okay, how could I manipulate a Fisher and a tetrahedron and convert them into each other? It's one of the things I have on my list for the VR anyway, as soon as I can get good control over the molecule, which the CS students are working on. So it's not ready to bring in here yet because I only got one, two. I only have two. So, okay. So if the molecules are oriented the same, you can use the group switching technique. If they're not, you have to use RRS and convert, or convert one into the other. All right. So... Let's make it more complicated. Two Fisher projections. Now, or sorry, a Fisher projection with two chiral centers. Now, this Fisher projection is going to look like this. And if we have this Fisher projection that looks like that, one of the questions I could ask you is, Oh, I have two carbons. That's like a Newman projection. And as a matter of fact, if I looked down the carbon-carbon bond there, I could make a Newman projection. And I could, I could make this, you know, I could really ask a tough question here. So is it going to be staggered or eclipsed? Well, if one's eclipsed, the rest have to be eclipsed. So it's either staggered or eclipsed. So I hear one eclipsed. Why do you think it's eclipsed, David? So in other words, when they have the same orientation, when they're both bold or both down, that means they're going to be lined up right on top of each other. So the Fisher projection for this would look like this, actually. It would be eclipsed. It would be eclipsed like that. Where these, let's call this group A and this group D. So there's A and D. And then... Here's B and C on the front carbon. So there's B to the left, C, and then here's E and F with the E here and the F there. So when you see a Fisher projection, it is eclipsed, just so you know. Okay. But also if I have a Fisher projection then, and I'm good with my Newman projections, I could realize that I could rotate D into E, E into F, and F into D, or down here, B into A, A into C, and C all the way over to B. So what I have is I've got a Newman projection on its side. So I can rotate the top groups, I can rotate the bottom groups. And that's going to be critical for this because that gives us actually another method we could use to determine whether they're the same or not. So, for instance, if I put a CL, I'll put an OH, I'll put an H, I'll put a methyl group, I'll put an H, and I'll put a BR. And then over here, I'll put an OH, a CL, an H, and a BR, and a CH3, and an H. And normally this is the kind of speed I operate with in generating exam questions. 
which can either be good or bad. Probably would be better if I really sat down and planned out exactly what kind of molecule I wanted. Now, when we get into these molecules, we have to compare top to top and bottom to bottom. So let me ask for the top carbon. Are those two carbons, do they have the same or opposite configuration? And you could do R and S on this if you wanted to. You could do group switching. Or you could try and rotate the molecules to line them up. And if you can't, they're opposite. So what do you think the top carbon is? Zach? Opposite. How many people agree it's opposite? Same? How many people think it's same? Okay. People whose hands didn't go up. Confused? Okay. So how did you do it, Zach? Okay, so when when the when they are opposite, you'll only be able, you'll only ever be able to match up one group. I can beat that. Because I can look at that molecule and go, opposite. And I had to make zero rotations. Because the H's are lined up, and the CL's and the OH's aren't. And they, I'll, the best I can do is do what you did, which was to line up the OH's, but then the other two didn't line up. So when you see that one one group is the same in both positions and the other two don't match up, it's opposite automatically. So you don't even have to like put the H in the back position? Okay. No, it, that's the thing. We don't have to do R and S. Our goal is, are they the same or opposite? So we can use, so in this case, that can't match them up. But what if I, if I rotated the H... If I rotated the H all the way over here, the CL to the top and the OH there, if I looked at this one, if I looked at this and this, those two, they're mirror images. These two, those two are mirror, are mirror images, and so they're opposite. And if they're opposite, I can never orient more than one in the same position, in the same direction. I've been doing this a lot longer, so that's... So how about the bottom one? Is the bottom carbon same or opposite? I hear some sames. Do we agree with the same? So in this case, if I rotated the BR down, the H over here and the methyl group there, all three line up, right? The BR there, the H there, the methyl group there. Now they all line up. And notice, I don't have to put the H in the back. All I'm doing is seeing, are the groups the same or are they opposite? Do they line up or do they not line up in their mirror images? So now the bottom carbon is the same. So with these two molecules that or with these two molecules, what's their relationship? They're diastereomers. Because one chiral center is opposite and one chiral center is the same. So these two are 
diastereomers. And they're not mesos because they are not in the airplane symmetry. Well, I'm going to get to they. I'm going to get to the question of whether they're meso or not for these kinds of molecules mm -hmm. for these Fisher projections. So that's the next thing we got to deal with. So does everybody kind of see that? Again, I'm comparing the chiral centers and going back to my operational definitions. Meso. What would a meso Fisher projection like this of two chiral centers, what would it look like? Let me draw one. So our first thing is we need two chiral centers and a mirror plane. The only way I get the mirror plane is if the top three groups are the same as the bottom three groups. And that's not all that helpful because you could say, well, where does the mirror plane have to go? The mirror plane has to go here. It has to cut the molecule in half. If the mirror plane cut the molecule vertically, what would happen? It would cut through those two carbons, and what happens then? They're not chiral. And what's the definition of a meso compound? Has to have chiral centers. So if you have a molecule with a mirror plane with no chiral centers, it's not meso. And can you have that? Yes. So the mirror plane has to cut this way. Which means that, first of all, you need all three groups up here to be all three groups, the same groups down here, because that's the only way they're ever going to line up. But then you look there and they go, well, they're not lined up. All right, well, let's line them up. So how am I going to line them up? Bring the OH over here, the methyl group there, the hydrogen there. So now there's my OH, here's my H, here's my CH3. Boy, I screwed that up, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so what do I have to do? Erase the bottom. Probably, this is probably the negative thing about drawing out problems real quick. So let's say I put the OH here, the H there, and the CH, no. I suspect I need, yeah, I need the H there and I need the CH3. Now hopefully if I rotate, everything will line up. So OH comes here, CH3 goes there, H, so CH3 is down, mirror position of that, OH, mirror position of that, H, mirror position. So for these types of Fisher projections that have two chiral centers, the molecule will only be meso if the two top, the top three groups and the bottom three groups are the same but that doesn't guarantee it'll be meso. You have to rotate the molecule, rotate those groups around, and try and line them up so you can see the mirror plane. If they have the mirror plane, then it's meso. If they don't have the mirror plane, it's not meso. So for that first example, the one that was wrong, it wasn't meso because the hydrogen burns the same Because I couldn't make it mirror images of each other. So that one's not meso. So what did I do? I changed its configuration, and now it's meso. So when I do these kinds of problems, the first thing I do is I check the molecule to see if it has the possibility of being meso. The one we did does not. So when you said the top one wasn't going, that the top one wasn't meso, I kind of stopped you. 
because we had to develop, okay, where's the mirror plane got to go? The top one is not meso because the top three groups and the bottom three groups are not the same. And you can't, the only way you have a meso compound is with that mirror plane. So we'll do, we'll look at this on Friday, but if you had two meso compounds, if they were both meso, they are the same meso compound. That's why I need num that's why I need A. Because in a problem like this, they could be the same meso compound. Or they could be meso and not meso and be diastereomers. Or they could be not both not meso, and then they're either the same, not meso, or in antimers. Okay. So I'll bring problems on Friday. If you have questions, you can bring those. I suspect that after we start doing problems, we'll have lots of questions. But we'll do problems in class, and then we'll finish up chapter six, basically today and Friday. And today and Friday. Uh, it's an upcoming Friday. Nope. No, I think it's November. Two Fridays? No, no, no. It's, it's an upcoming Friday.